Two consecutive Russian attacks on a medical center in the northeastern Ukrainian city of Sumy killed at least eight people on Saturday morning, officials said. The first strike killed one person. Russia attacked again while patients and staff were evacuating, said Ukraine's interior minister Iyer Klemenko. Local officials in Sumy said Shahid drones were used in the attack. Eleven other people were wounded, the head of the Sumy City Military Administration, Alexei Drozdenko, said. Sumy lies some 20 miles from Russia's Kursk region, where Ukrainian troops have been deployed since August 6 in a bid to divert the Kremlin's military focus away from the front line in Ukraine. Ukraine's Air Force said it shot down 69 of 73 Russian drones launched overnight as well as two of the four missiles. City authorities in Kiev said around 15 drones had been shot down over the Ukrainian capital and its outskirts. In Krivi Rih, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky's home city, local officials said Saturday that a man's body was found under the rubble of an administrative building hit by a Russian missile on Friday, bringing the death toll from that attack to four. In Russia, the defense ministry said Saturday that air defenses overnight had shot down four Ukrainian drones over the Belgorod region and one over the Kursk region, both areas bordering Ukraine. One person was killed in Ukrainian shelling of the Russian border city of Shebekino on Saturday, Belgorod regional governor Vyacheslav Gladkov said. Two other people were wounded. <laughs> A private Robinson R-44 helicopter has crashed in Russia's Arkhangelsk Oblast, resulting in the deaths of two men, one of whom is believed to be Sergei Smetanin, a member of Arkhangelsk City Council from the United Russia Political Party. Latvia-based Russian media outlet Meduza and Russia Telegram channels reported this. Reports emerged on September 26 that a helicopter traveling from the village of Bich to the village of Karandashevskia had gone missing and contact with it had been lost. On the morning of September 27, Kremlin-aligned Russian news outlet TASS reported that the wreckage of the helicopter had been found, and the bodies of two people had been discovered at the crash site. A criminal case has been opened regarding the incident, with reports stating that the flight had not been authorized. Telegram channels close to law enforcement wrote on September 26 that Sergei Smetanin, a member of Arkhangelsk City Duma from the United Russia Political Party, and local businessman Alexei Semenov, the owner of the helicopter, were on board. Smetanin and Semenov, as reported, were flying to go on a fishing trip, Meduza summarized. After sanctions were imposed on Russia due to its bloody war against Ukraine, there has been an increase in aircraft accidents in Russia. This surge is attributed to a shortage of essential parts that Russia previously used to import from Western countries. At least three people died and six others injured on Friday after a Russian airstrike hit the regional police department in the Ukrainian city of Krivi Rih, officials said. According to State Emergency Service of Ukraine, dozens of residential buildings, including an educational establishment, were damaged by the airstrike.
Reserve Colonel of the Armed Forces of Ukraine, pilot instructor, military expert Roman Svitan, said in a report for Channel 24 that the Kursk region is less than 1% of the entire territory of Russia. Svitan noted that the Russians understand that in order for Ukraine to seize the Kursk region completely, it needs a half a million strong army, which it simply does not have now. From a logical point of view, they are ready not to give it up, but to wait, even taking into account that the Ukrainian defense forces will now be strengthened as much as possible, they will still only control the left bank of the seam. They have come to terms with this and have begun to build certain fortifications on the right bank of the seam. They are already ready to give up the left bank of the seam. The Kremlin does not accept any pressure from the population. Our actions there are carried out according to two objectives, ensuring the security of the Sumi region and tying down enemy forces, the reserve colonel of the armed forces of Ukraine noted. The several thousand Russian civilians still living in territory occupied by Ukrainian troops are mostly elderly and largely cut off from the outside world with no electricity or phone network, according to Ukrainian soldiers. Ukrainian soldiers deployed as part of Kyiv's shock offensive into Russia's western Kursk region told AFP of a coexistence with the locals despite initial mistrust from residents exposed to Russian state media portrayals of Ukrainians as monsters. The incursion two and a half years after Moscow invaded Ukraine is the first time a foreign army has entered Russia since the end of World War II. Ukraine says it controls around 100 border settlements over an area of around 1,000 square kilometers, a humiliation for President Vladimir Putin. Russian authorities have said tens of thousands of civilians fled at the start of the incursion. The number that remained has not been made public. Oleksiy Dmitrashkivsky, spokesman for Ukraine's military administration in the Kursk region, said several thousand Russian civilians are still there. The Ukrainian soldiers said living conditions are difficult and civilians have to rely on their own reserves and vegetable gardens or else the food, water and medicine the Ukrainian military says it is distributing. They also reported that shops and pharmacies no longer work. Electricity and mobile phone networks have been shut down and Russian forces, which launched a counter-offensive in September, are constantly bombarding the area.